Mark Anthony here from the AIBC conference in Budapest, Hungary. I'm here today with Attila Pinke. How are you doing? I'm doing fine and good to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for finding time to come and join me. Um, Attila Pinke is the founder of Blockchain Bloom, and he's here to elaborate a little bit on what Blockchain Bloom are doing and also how he sees this industry at the moment. So I'd like to start off, Attila. Um, we're here at AIBC, East Europe 2024. What do you hope to take away from this event and uh, elaborate a little bit on how you actually got to come over here? Right. So first of all, uh, it was very kind from AIBC that they invited me to come here. Uh, so it was an honor. And um, I actually, this is the first day when we're recording this interview. And I'm looking forward to, for networking. I'm looking forward to, you know, uh, walk around and, you know, just, just browsing, talk to people in this industry. I'm mostly coming from the crypto area, crypto blockchain, and uh, many of these gaming industry parts, uh, some of them unknown for me, so I can learn a lot of things. So I can, there will be a lot of takeaway from me at the end of the yeah, day. Super, Attila, super. Um, well, you have been involved in the blockchain and crypto world for years. Yeah. as far as I am concerned, but I'm sure of it. And your YouTube channel as well on Blockchain Bloom is uh, the most viewed crypto channel in Hungary. That's correct. So that being said, what initially inspired you to dive into this field and what keeps you so passionate about it today? So to be honest with you, uh, back in 2017, I can date that when I started to get involved with blockchain and crypto. Uh, obviously, the 2017 bull run for Bitcoin was a catchy one uh, to realize that this industry could be something interesting. And um, but then I started very slowly with education. So I didn't jump in like with investments straight away. I wanted to understand it. And around that time, I was looking for investments. What could be the great investment? And as more I learned about blockchain, Bitcoin at that time, the more it opened up for me. And I realized that this could be something which could be valuable in the future. And um, Unfortunately, not that many people in Hungary speak good English. So I remember for me, uh, it took years to really understand the whole concept of it. Of course, step by step, getting more and more and start to invest. So since 2020 is the year, 1st of January, when I became full time crypto. And uh, that was the time I was thinking what else I can get out of this. And I realized that an educational platform is really missing here in Hungary. And a lot of people uh, missing out of this industry simply having the language barrier. Um, and therefore, in 2020 in May, on the day of the Bitcoin halving, I started my channel, which is called Blockchain Bloom. Uh, I have actually two channels. The Blockchain Bloom Hungary is the Hungarian one, but this is the one which took up straight away. The English one is not that well known. This is simply just Blockchain Bloom. And uh, so the passion comes from education. So my channel is not about shilling, you know, tokens, all these kind of things. It's uh, purely about how the people not get tricked in the industry, how they have to, you know, store their cryptocurrency safely and securely, uh, what kind of platforms they should or what they shouldn't use, how not get scammed. So my goal is basically with my daily videos, to keep them up to date, what's happening in the blockchain uh, crypto world, because you have to stay up to date, I believe, if you would like to be successful in this industry. Otherwise, you don't know what you invest, when to invest, how to invest. And, um, you know, uh, I got a lot of feedback over the years, how much it helped the industry. So it started kind of hobby for me, this part, this educational part. And since now, you know, I'm doing daily videos. I'm sometimes have lectures at universities. I attend to conferences. I'm going to here also in the afternoon speaking on the stage as well. So I also enjoying this very much. It is something I can give back and it's became a business as well, even if it started as a hobby. Super. So uh, you're kind of like a safety net for blockchain and crypto. Thank you very much. Uh, try to be. No, it's definitely, definitely. Um, so with, with more than 9 million views, wow, that's a big number. Blockchain Bloom has become a significant so, uh, source of crypto knowledge in Hungary. So what do you think is the current, uh, so what do you think uh, sets your channel apart from others? And how did you decide on the content uh, to cover your, your videos? Right, I believe in consistency. So it's a kind of thing when you would like to chop a tree, you have to hit it with the ax every single day, one day it's gonna fall. So I started, as I mentioned, back in 2020. And since then, 
every single day there are videos on my channel. Uh, now I'm producing actually every speaking two, three short videos per day and from Monday to Tuesday every day, uh, no, Monday to Thursday, sorry, um, half an hour video. So basically I think this is very important that the viewers can count on me. If they would like to stay up to date in crypto and blockchain, they know they're getting every day the most important news. So this is actually one thing which is very important. The second thing is, I believe I'm really passionate about it. So it's not really a work for me. It's something which I love to do. And I think you always, if, if you have anything, any area uh, you're working in, but you really love it, you as a presenter, I saw yesterday on stage how you passionate you were, how you're talking on the Thank awards. You. So it's the same thing. If you do it in this way, I think it, it, it also helps. And the third thing, I think that I would never trick people into some shady businesses just to get money out of for myself because I do my investment for myself. I'm okay with that. Uh, I really would like to give back a little bit uh, because of my experiences. So I think these components, the consistency, they can count on me, they can stay up to date and they don't get tricked. It's definitely something which brings more viewers and makes them stay on your channel. Super, Attila. Thank you very much. Um, well, as someone deeply involved in blockchain community, how do you uh, foresee the future of blockchain technology in Eastern Europe over the next five years? And which industries do you think will benefit most from blockchain adoption or integration? Well, I think uh, blockchain and crypto itself has a bright future worldwide. Um, since this is happening on the blockchain, since it's uh, on the internet kind of thing, um, we don't, I don't think about that borders matter that much because there's cross-border things happening here, even we're talking about the transaction, for example. Um, I, don't, I cannot talk about whole Eastern Europe because I just don't have the knowledge and the data for that. But uh, living in a country in Hungary, which is part of Eastern Europe, I do see that we, we're catching up. People are really, um, many of them, getting more and more open-minded. And to be honest with you, the Eastern European part it's financially, when it comes to individuals, mostly not that stable that the Western side of the world. So what I see that here even more people see opportunities uh, in crypto as a, you know, a safety net or how to get out of the, their everyday problems. Uh, why, you know, in the, here we have also credit cards and all these kind of things. But when you're looking at countries just moving away from Eastern Europe, you know, Venezuela, Argentina, all these kind of countries, which even suffering much more, the need for crypto is even bigger there. So therefore, I think East Europe is somewhere in the middle. So not in the Western world, but not in, the, in this very, very developed and, uh, developing and poorest countries. So I think it's, it's a big need for it. But what is very important is education. And what I realized that the majority is focusing just making business, making money, and sometimes just using people who are lack of, lack of knowledge, uh, trick them in. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this is a bit unfair. And this area, uh, Eastern Europe, I think many parts, uh, language barriers, not just in Hungary, but some other Eastern European countries causing this problem. And uh, I think for the locals, it will be very, very important to establish educational platforms. Uh, and then crypto and blockchain can have a you know bright future. And the blockchain itself, today, my panel conversation, it's about real world assets. It's so many things you can put on the blockchain, to be honest with you. Almost everything, it could be tokenized. Uh, the question is the regulations again. It's one of the key things what we're facing. Because when it comes, for example, to the real world asset, uh, you know, it's totally set, depends on the jurisdiction. You have a property here or you have a property, for example, in the United States. There are different kind of law or regulatory things what you have to follow. But when it goes to the blockchain, it will be cross borders. It's going to be available for everybody. It's moving from this geographical point, from the location where it was originally regulated as, for example, a real world asset. It could be a property, it could be anything. So this could be a very, um, I think, interesting uh, thing in the future, definitely. But uh, I think we face a lot of, lot of questions how we can manage this on a global base. So we are, I think, Bitcoin is 15 years old. Um, the things, it's a very young industry. So 
we have to try out things. There will be failures. There will be dead ends, which, which okay, it's a hype, it's a FOMO, but at the end of the day, it doesn't work out. And sooner or later, we will find a way, I believe, that what is really good for and works with blockchain. Because back then, I remember everybody wanted to put everything on blockchain. Blockchain, oh, new thing, let's do it. And for example, if you have a database, uh, what is changing continuously, and it's not important that nobody can you know, trick you, it's immutable, or these kind of things, you don't have to put it in the blockchain, use a normal database. So it takes time for companies who managers to figure out what they really need. Do they really need it? But I think in many cases could be useful. Super, thank you very much. Um, so, uh, well, you frequently speak about crypto at events and give lectures at universities. So not only your, your YouTube channel, but you're like very widely spread. Um, what is uh, the most common misconception about blockchain and crypto you encounter? And how do you approach it by educating people to overcome these misconceptions? Right. I mean, to be honest, there are a couple of uh, I could talk about. But uh, briefly, um, Bitcoin is the most well-known cryptocurrency. And uh, first of all, that uh, the anonymity or Bitcoin that's something that people think that if I'm on the blockchain, if I have Bitcoin, I can, um, you know, disappear, um, you know, get the litter road and avoid authorities, all these kind of things. And uh, you, they have to under, understand that it's not anonymous, it's pseudonym. So as soon as they know, you know, this address has contacted you, they can track you down to the even to the first block. Uh, this is one thing. Some people invest is investing wise believe that, oh, Bitcoin is just too expensive. I cannot invest anymore. You don't have to buy Bitcoin. It's 100 million Satoshis. It's a small part of it. You know, you can buy a fraction of Bitcoin. It's in it. So these are one things. But the other thing is, I think, the trust, which is very difficult because uh, the past where from Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is coming from, it's connected to the dark web, has a very bad reputation from the beginning when we talk about Silk Road and many other cases. So people are really afraid from it. And uh, it also needs a generation change in my opinion, because even my parents' age, they are in the, you know, their times they would like to touch it. A property, you can touch it. If it's like a piece of gold, you can touch it. Um, but when it comes to digital assets, you cannot touch it. Do I trust the blockchain? Is it really there? What if it's, uh, you know, uh, how it can disappear? You have heard so many bad things sometimes. But at the end of the day, it turns out it never crypto's fault. It's always a lack of knowledge. And that's why people can get tricked. They don't store their crypto, crypto uh, properly and all these kind of things. And that leads uh, to, uh, to losing it. So I think these are a couple of misconceptions and uh, we have to build confidence, I believe. And that takes time and takes practice. They have to try it out. And it's not just because somebody telling you it's good. You have to experience it. It's, it's good. Yes, yes, yes. And we have, you know, a lot of hackers working kind of against you. That doesn't really help the industry. Becoming smarter every single day. They're always ahead of us, yeah. I believe. So on the other hand, in long term, they're helping because they're pointing to the weak points. But until on this road while we're walking and uh, going that direction, it's causing a lot of uh, you know uncertainty, which doesn't doesn't help uh, when you know would like to trust something, and then it comes some negative news. Then it's oh maybe step back, maybe not. So yeah, it's time I believe. Super. Um, my last question for you: uh, Given your success um, and expertise in the crypto space, what do you advise would give? Um, an aspiring crypto enthusiast and entrepreneurs in Eastern Europe, what they want to um, uh, what to enter um, into the blockchain industry or invest in cryptocurrencies rather. Right. Um, I think, as I pointed out earlier, here in Eastern Europe, uh, the financial stability for people it's it's not that uh, great for many of them. So uh, the the middle class kind of disappearing, and you have the ultra rich or you have the getting the poor. So crypto could really help, for example, if I get, go back to Bitcoin, in the old days, it was always, if something was new, something was hot, something was valuable, the big guys could get it and you couldn't put your hand on it. It's, it was just something that you couldn't touch. And for example, in the Bitcoin case, Bitcoin is for everybody. Everybody can get it. Everybody can store it and uh, everybody can uh, profit from it. So I think 
financial systems uh, and these kind of areas and uh, financial stabil stability, uh, so make it stable financially. Um, this is definitely an area which uh, people can actually use and get more out of it. But uh, again, I always come back to three most important things, education, 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 <laughs> because without it, it's going to be a mess and you will get hurt and you're going to, to leave the industry maybe for good or coming back when it's just too late. So that's why important start with education, understand the whole concept and uh, moving step by step, not all in and all these kind of things, uh, study the market, understand you know the ups and downs, how the whole thing is working. And uh, then I think it could be beneficial for, 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 for many people and actually make lives better. Super. Uh, Attila, thank you very much for the elaboration. Whoever is watching right now, stop exactly what you're doing and go onto <laughs> YouTube and subscribe to Blockchain Bloom. If you would like to um, uh, a safety net on everything crypto and blockchain and really learn, as Attila saying, education, 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 that is the right thing to do. So ladies and gentlemen, you had it right over there. Attila, thank you very much for your time. I know you're a very busy man, so I wish you happy networking and happy educating. And Thank I'll you see you on much. the panel very soon. Thank you very much. Thank Have you. a good one. Thanks Have for a good it. one. Okay, bye guys.